Welcome to this edition of the Web Weekly Highlights. My name is Dan Wallin, and I'm excited to bring you some great content again on a variety of topics. We're going to start off with things like WebGL. We'll talk about how you can structure your AngularJS code, jump into some CSS3 transforms, different ways you can actually center things, which is always tricky with CSS, and some other content that'll hopefully enhance your experience at work and make you more productive. So let's go ahead and jump right in. One of the hot technologies out there is WebGL. If you haven't played with it much, you can actually put 3D models directly in the browser, rotate those around, and do all kinds of cool things. In fact, I recently had someone I talked to in some of the classes I teach that was doing this with houses. And they wanted to be able to show a house, let people rotate it, and even go into it. Well, there's a lot of new libraries coming out for WebGL and it makes it a lot easier to integrate these 3D models into your web applications where appropriate. And one of those is called BabylonJS. So you can go to BabylonJS.com to get more information and you'll see here that not only can you download it and read about it, but they have a lot of cool demos. One of the recent demos they did was a very cool export, which I'll show you right here. And this particular diagram or image that you see here came from 3D Studio Max, if I remember right. And they actually integrated it into this BabylonJS framework and made it possible through the browser. And what's really cool about it is you can even switch camera views. Now, this is kind of the overall view, but I can even go straight to a train that's running. And uh, if you get seasick, be careful here, but because the train moves pretty quick. But you can actually see this train, and this is all native to the browser. Yeah, and you're probably sick by now, so we'll move back. But that would be an example of uh, BabylonJS and some of the cool things that are coming now that are just native to the browser. If you work at all with AngularJS, then you'll know there's a lot of samples out there that show various ways of creating controllers or factories or services or whatever it may be in your application. Well, I decided to put together a post that highlights the way I like to structure my code for AngularJS, and I called it aptly structuring AngularJS code. But the goal of the post is really just to walk through and give some kind of fundamental code to help people get started, especially if you're new to AngularJS, with some of the things that I feel are best practices. And also, I'm always very sensitive to long-term maintenance of applications. So it'll also employ some things that'll make it hopefully a little bit easier to maintain down the road. So there's uh, examples of different ways of doing it for controllers. Uh, I have factories and services and filters and even uh, directives. And this will show an example of how you can get started with those. And then, of course, you would plug in all your code. So feel free to check out that post if you work at all with AngularJS. Earlier, we saw a cool look at WebGL and some of the libraries out there like BabylonJS that you can use to build 3D applications. Well, with CSS3, you can also do some pretty cool things, and you don't even have to have necessarily 3D models. So in a post called CSS Mac Plus, and this is by Donovan Hutchinson, he uh, goes through and walks through the process of using 3D transforms and shows how you can actually build a pretty cool little model of an old Mac. And so if you walk through the post, he'll actually show you kind of a almost wireframe type model. Let me scroll down here just a little bit. And you can see that we have the front and then we have the back. And he's using CSS3 transforms to flip these around. And then he'll walk you through the whole process and all the CSS. And uh, you can see we have some figures here for the back and the right and the left and things like that of building that up into a box. Kind of looks like the starter piece of it. And then finally down here towards the bottom, after you look through the code, he'll start to add some bevels. And if we go all the way to the bottom, we get to kind of the finished product here. And what's, what I really like about this is it's all native CSS3. So it's only going to work in the modern browsers, of course. But you know this is the direction the web's heading. And I think it's very promising for sure that you can build this with just native CSS, maybe a little JavaScript here or there, and HTML. If you work much with Node.js and you do web development, then odds are you probably use the Express module, whether you're building MVC-style applications or you're doing RESTful APIs. Well, there's an interesting new project that's been released by PayPal called Kraken.js. Great name. I'll give them credit for that. And it actually has some nice wrappers or higher-level APIs that sit on top of Express. 
And they have a lot of really nice features built in. So they have some extra security if you're doing internationalization and you need to work with multiple languages and things. They also have uh, different template support with Dust, and you can even plug in others, and some other things I could go into as well. So if you're doing Node.js development at all, it's definitely something to check out, and you can get to all the code. They have some documentation and some samples that you can walk through. As a web developer, we typically have to work a lot with forms. We're capturing data from end users, and we need to do something with that. Well, there's a really nice article. It's actually been around for a while, but it was recently updated, and it's called Making Forms Fabulous with HTML5. And it's by Pete LePage and Jan Kleinert. I hopefully I said those names right. But they provide a really nice walkthrough of some of the different input types you can use in your forms, especially on mobile. And these would be things like doing input type equals number. Nothing drives me crazier than when I go to a phone number entry on my phone and I get the alphabetic keyboard. Well, they'll talk through some of the different input types that you can actually use. And they'll show you how these apply to mobile and what you can do with them. They also go into things like the data list, uh, pattern validation, and more. So if you're a little bit new to the HTML5 form elements and the different ways they can be used, definitely check out this article because they provide a lot of great content. One of my least favorite things to do in the web world is to vertically center certain elements in a web page. It's actually kind of challenging depending on what it is you're trying to center. So there's a really nice post that covers various CSS techniques you could do from the flex box to fixed position to responsive design and several others that show different techniques for absolute horizontal and vertical centering of elements within your page. And if it's something that you struggle with, I actually found a lot of good tips in here. And uh, there's more than you'll want to use, but at least you'll know the different options if you're new to this and maybe don't do this every day. And for people like myself, who I consider myself pretty good at CSS, but I still struggle in some of these areas with centering, it's a really good post. and I found a lot of great content in there. So definitely check it out if you're interested in that topic. Well, thanks for taking the time to tune in to this edition of the Web Weekly Highlights. I hope you found some content that's interesting and that you can use in your projects at work or hobbies or whatever you're doing. I'd like to thank Interface Technical Training for allowing me to use their studio to film this. I really appreciate that. And if you're interested in some of the live classes I teach, you can actually go to interfacett.com and you can get more information about our remote live technology. And this allows you to take a class on JavaScript or HTML5 or C Sharp or AngularJS online from anywhere in the world. And you'll have access to all the code and views that a student locally would have. Plus, you can actually see the instructor as well. It's a really cool experience. So I hope to see you online at some point, And thanks again for tuning in.